Like my mom, she grew up with uh, season tickets to Madison Square Garden and her and her dad, they would go to the Rangers play like all the time. And then I saw you guys were talking about in the first podcast, you were talking about, you know, hockey in the South and how that's such a weird, strange thing. And like, I grew up North of Atlanta. And so it was like the same kind of thing for my brother where people would be like, you play hockey, but you live in Georgia. Like, that's so weird. But to my mom kind of imparted her love of hockey onto my brother. And so it just became a, a big part of our family. So, you having fun yet? Welcome to episode four of the Late Game Podcast. I'm Jeffrey M. Zucker, uh, executive producer, actor, co creator in the Late Game. Uh, with me is my business partner, co creator, writer, director, Jeff Tyner. Hey, how's it going, baby? Doing well, and we're so pumped to share with the audience today Kristen Andrea Russell, who played Aaron in the late game. Uh, she does an incredible job, and it's fun learning more about her career and just kind of her experience on set. Yeah, I actually learned a lot about her, her life prior to the late game, so uh, pretty informative stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, she's somebody that I see continuing to grow her career and the audience will certainly become more familiar with. And yeah, I mean, in terms of, of us, we've been going through experience of getting feedback on the film for, you know, the first few weeks. Um, we've been playing some beer leagues, so figured we could dig into that a little bit. I mean, how are you feeling overall with the response? You know, obviously everything that gets anywhere these days has its haters, but I, I mean, I've personally felt pretty good overall. Uh, I mean, the response from the beer league crowd has been so overwhelmingly positive and I hate that I let the trolls kind of get to me for about 24 hours and then realize we're doing something right. If we've got this many irate losers, um, but everyone else, it's just, cause it's not just people saying they like it. It's people are getting really specific with all of these things that they like. And I think that shows that we're making an impact, which is, I mean, if you would have told me this before we shot the movie, I'd be head over heels. Like, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the response from the hockey community has been as good as we could have imagined. And like you said, like when people give specific examples, it's pretty heartwarming and feels rewarding to see so many people saying like, oh, this feels like my life or feels like I know these people. Yeah, because going into it, like, you know, a nervous wreck about so many things, but I really, really believed internally that if we can just, you know, hit this right, I, th I really believe that, yeah, these people that are praising it. I, you know, this is kind of what we thought would happen in a small sample size. I, you know, I hope it can, can continue to grow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, especially during the editing process was something that always like held me in a good spot. Like, I know this will ring true for hockey people because I, I am one of them. <laughs> we are them. Um, and yeah, that's, that's been the case. It's been, it's been fun to see and rewarding and, um, you know, hoping any and everybody that plays beer league has anything related to hockey or even people that are just in recreational sports or comedies start to watch it, but just getting out there in hockey has been fun. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just, uh, like I said, like we, you hinted at, we're playing on the same beer league team now and I am a Riley of sorts in this locker room. I'm a newer guy, not rusty, but, um, a lot of new names to learn last night. And it was so delightful. So many dudes on that team telling me how much they loved the movie. And again, specific reasons, not just saying they loved it. Um, it is a very, you've got a very warm and accepting locker room. And I'm very pumped to be a Bear Seal as featured in the late game. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to the Bear Seals. Uh, that is the first iteration of that team in the picture Riley's holding in his apartment in the movie, as well as the hat that we won. And, you know, you, you stole my thunder a little bit, but I was going to tell the audience that uh, I made my long anticipated return to beer league hockey. I've, you know, I am on two teams on the roster for this winter league, but as uh, the late game launch has started, I have, you know, lost a lot of time and also just the energy to go play hockey late at night, which is, you know, ironic given the movie that we're pushing and, um, but, you know, with this particular team, the Bear Seals, who took off the fall winter season and now we're doing spring, 
you know, it's just a, a team that I really enjoy being around. So I'm extra motivated to go. And now having you join the team for this season makes me not want to miss any games. So, you know, we get to play. We don't, haven't gotten to play a ton together outside of like pickup in a handful of beer league games over the years. Um, so it'll be, you know, this is our first time really on an official team together since our junior stingrays days at 18. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty exciting. And yeah, just having, you know, I mentioned in our group thread last night that having a good group of guys to like, know I'm showing up for, it makes it a lot easier to drag myself to the rink. Definitely. Cause you know, it's, it's almost like, you're going to a hangout sesh that has a hockey game <laughs> attached to it. Um, there's a really good vibe pre-game, but especially post-game. Uh, you know, to shout out our 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 friend friend podcast, beers in the lot. We had some beers in the lot. Um, you know, just just stood around a circle. Um, a little, a few more cannabis users on this team than my normal team, so it felt fun to see some some joints getting passed around. Just. Just good vibes all around, man. It was, it was, uh, I had a very good time. And, you know, not to bury the lead, but a 9 4 win for the good guys. Yep. Yep. That, that was, it was a fun game. And, uh, shout out to our boy, Bo Skaggs. I feel like he really helped develop that, uh, vibe that we had going. 100%. He's really ta taken the lead. A uh, lot of leadership potential there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he could be my understudy, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I mean, the game itself, you talked about we won 9-4. It was fun. Um, and, you know, we had a full bench. And, like, I think we talked about in the locker room, especially with this team, like, first game of the season and the playoffs are the only times we have full benches. What really cracked me up the most was, A, we had enough. We had the perfect number of forwards for three set lines, but we rolled the bench and got a, too many men on the ice penalty. That That cracked me up a lot. But also the catalyst of me joining this team was so me and you would play together and we got two shifts together the whole game, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely always play better when I'm with you. And I obviously you're really good. So like I can get, you know, I'm more likely to have success. But yeah, I know I always I have fun playing with you. I hope that we can play me, you and Bo as a line more because that was I fun like the that. minutes we were out there. Um, and yeah, part of that was my fault. Like I'm not officially the mm -hmm. captain, but I, I am, you know, People at did least look to you. I was, you know, as a newbie, I was like, oh shit, everyone's looking to Z and I was not going to step on your toes. I, I was just going <sighs> along with the flow and Hey, it worked out fine, but it was pretty silly. And then, I mean, do you, do you want to kind of tell your Calamino moment story? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, just on the lines briefly, like, yeah, I'm kind of at least the de facto GM. I just, I end up running teams that I'm on because no one really takes up the responsibility. And I just, I'm like, well, this needs to get done. Very and, calm, you know. Yeah, exactly. I do it in a very organized manner. And, you know, in terms of when we were trying to figure out if we were rolling the lines or doing lines, like in that moment, you know, I, I am not ashamed to admit that I enjoy a, a pregame blazer, uh, <laughs> some cannabis pregame to sort of lighten my, my mental uh, state, you know, limit my anxiety, make me a little more patient on the ice. But when it came to deciding last second, if we were having lines or not, especially on this team, like the kind of like tougher guys that I told you left the team, like they were reeling to rolling lines for whatever reason. And like, we'd gotten to a point where we were just doing, um, people who'd be centered the whole time and then rotate the wingers. So like, I just, I didn't know that we had nine. If I'd known mm -hmm. we had nine forwards, then like I probably would have pushed for the lines. And then by the time it all got going, it was just so confusing. And there's all these new people. It was just like, all right, it's I don't think first it was game, change. baby. Yeah. You, you just, you roll with it. It's fine. I just thought it was still the, 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 what made me really chuckle was the too many men on the ice is all it was. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, we knew it was coming. Yeah, that was we had some close ones before that, but no, it was a it was a great time. I'm glad again. It was uh, the opposite of the late game, a seven fifteen start after daylight savings time. So I actually ran into rush hour traffic in daylight on the way to the game. It was disorienting. Yeah, it's a weird vibe, and you know, for better or worse, Big Bear doesn't give us a lot of early games. Um, and yeah, in terms of the John Calamino stuff, you know, I've decided to just really you know, buy in and promote the movie as much as possible. So, you know, I wore my, my Calamino purple shell and purple gloves. Um, I haven't yet s switched the cage over to that helmet. So not that helmet yet, although I did put some John Calamino stickers on my helmet. Um, and yeah, just am embracing sort of just the silly aspect of it and hoping that I turn people onto the movie, you know, maybe somebody has already seen it and notices me, but um, I'm not one to really like try to make a spectacle of myself, but in this particular instance, it, 
it's helpful to our business and I really believe in our product. And so, you know, like John brought out his uh, dental cards uh, onto the ice, you know, I wanted to bring out late game cards to hand out. And so I thought I was safe tucking it in like the sort of belly area of my girdle where in the movie I have the gauze. Uh, well, that's where that scene, I thought it was in your glove when it fell. It was in your in your pants. I was sure it was going to come out of the glove, just the way it was sitting in there. So, like John does in the movie, that just wasn't practical. <laughs> but I, in my, I just I didn't think it was going to come out of the pants. Um, they were on tight and everything, and then yeah, just in the most John Calamino moment I've ever had in real life. Uh, you know, skating hard on my shift, trying to do the right for the boys, and <laughs> my like six late game cards fall out and scatter everywhere. And I'm, you know, I could wait for a whistle, but my perspective is like, I don't want somebody like slipping and breaking their neck on a late game card. So I immediately am like down picking them up. And I remember I got the last one and then one more fell out of my hand. I was like, fuck. And then uh, immediately skated back to the bench. Like, get me the fuck off the ice. This is so ridiculous. Yeah. And to add a little more context, this was in the neutral zone, a little past the red line. And the best part was you had skated past it once, actually, I think before you noticed it. But then once you noticed it, like the whole play goes past you as you're bent over getting these cards. And it's just, oh, my God, it, it's, it was so perfect. It was so perfect. I wish that we had it on camera. It was really like, hilarious. It, God, I was saying, why couldn't that have been at a live barn uh, c- yeah. compatible rink? Because that that's your marketing right there. Oh my God. It was so good. And then I think, I think Bo drove the ship on this one about you giving a card to the refs in the intermission. Yeah. So like, you know, Bo had said he was going to bring his camera out so we could film me doing something. I was like, all right, if he's going to do it, like I wasn't going to make too big of a thing, but, um, and then by the time, like it was intermission, I was like, Oh, I feel real serious now. I want to win the game. Like, he's like, no, come on. Like we brought everything out. Like, I was like, fine. Like I'll do it to the ref, not to the other team. And so I went over to one of the refs and, it's like, oh, have you heard of the late game and handed him the card? And and then the other ref called me out. He's like, oh, you're the guy that dropped all those cards. I wonder <laughs> what that was. It's like, yeah, that was I didn't that hear was that me. part. <laughs> That's you know, amazing. So, yeah, I don't know if that made the video. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to embrace it and use our beer league time to promote the film and to try to help us build a community around the late game. I love it because it's just so – it's true synergy between you Jeffrey Zucker and John Calamino. Um, and I, you know, I think I've, I've pitched a bit of a discretionary, depending on how the game goes, you can hand them out in the, the handshake line, but we don't, don't want to create enemies if uh, it's not the right time. Yeah, this is true. And I, I went over to the bench and gave one of their guys after, you know, they weren't pumped after their nine, four loss, but yeah. Um, I wanted to go back out. You talked me out of it, which was for the best, most likely. I think probably. Although I will say it was a pretty clean game across the board. It, like, cause it was eight nothing at one point, And that's where it can really turn, especially because our bench cheered that eight nothing goal a little too much. Um, so thankfully it stayed a pretty chill game overall. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, they did get a little chippy as they were getting frustrated. A little bit, it wasn't yeah, too but, bad, but nothing but... over the line. Yeah. And in terms of us cheering the eight nothing goal, I think that was maybe when Anthony scored one of his, and like the, it's the whole bench was genuinely indiv- happy for him. Yeah, it's tough not yeah. to get pumped for individuals. So like, I got it. It's just it went on a little bit too yep. long. Yep. Yeah. No, so that, I almost pulled. I, I almost pulled the Calamino ADR line of show some freaking class, but I just said let's let's class it up a little bit. I, I yeah. softened it a little. bit. So what did you have two goals and multiple assists? Three or four assists, I think. I was it felt really good to get some guys on the board. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, that was good. They appreciate and it. Especially one, that one, last assist was my favorite. Uh to the point. Was you that, it was like uh, the last minute of the game and you were in the zone maybe at the hash marks and you kind of pulled back away from the defenseman and then got it. Oh, it didn't even go in. It wasn't, it wasn't a goal. Assist. Yeah, no, it that didn't was, go in. But it was, was a great the only, pass. That was the only dangle I hold because i was like well I, I see this guy coming so it's like yeah it was for someone else's glory you know but right yeah at least i'm gonna give people some chances that's all i'm, I'm looking to stack up this season i appreciate that and you know sorry audience that we're opining about our our beer league but uh it's certainly part part for the course with uh the late game and hoping to get other people to share their beer league stories on this show at some point 
And, you know, for me, like I've been super stressed as we've been launching the movie. It's been a lot of work and I, I you know, I've taken on a lot and purposefully, but I think, you know, when I hadn't played hockey in at least two or three weeks and I hadn't played in like a league game in months. And afterwards, I just felt really glad that I did like kind of like Riley when he leaves his game, like. I was like, maybe, maybe this is part of why I've been stressed. In addition to all the work is just like, I haven't been getting on the ice enough and it's just, it's cathartic and therapeutic. And, you know, I, having you on the Bear Seals is going to get me to go to as many of those games as possible at the least. Yeah, I'm a full believer and, you know, we've been traveling a lot, so I've missed, you know, I, on a normal week. We I'm love playing, that Friday skate and I've yeah, not go, gone Friday in so skate. long. I'm typically playing three times a week. I'm supposedly playing four times this week. So that's exciting. Um, and then, yeah, I just missing games because of our travel schedule, you know, it's, it's all for the best, but it's, I feel the absence. So I'm glad I could play a part in you coming out, but I'm also glad you felt good because you look good out there, man. And you wouldn't, I wouldn't have guessed that's your first game in months. So I weeks think that's a good... at least. Oh, for real game. Yeah. Months. I was, right. to say I was thinking game, of Friday. Yeah, not skate. Yeah. 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 Um, cause the game's different than Friday. So yeah, no, yeah. it was, um, it was fun to watch. I mean, um, let's not also, you got a nice assist to Bo's pretty goal. Cool. So you're on the score sheet. I love it. Yeah. That assist felt good. Thankfully, uh, Bo took that to the finish line. Yeah. As was, was a beaut. Silkiest goal of the night. Well, you know, we'll try to get more into recapping some beer league stuff as, as we get moving here. Maybe bring in, you know, ask some of our guests about their beer league happenings. We can maybe bring and, Sean on just for the intros. He, he can chime in too, but then they might get too yes. long. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And that's Sean Shapiro who plays Nick, the goalie in the movie NHL writer. Yeah. We might get a little too deep, but we'll have him on at some point. And, you know, just thanks everybody for all the support around the film and for checking out the podcast. And without further ado, we will pass you to our interview with Kristen Andrea Russell, who plays Aaron, the scorekeeper. Kristen, thanks for joining us on the Lake Game podcast. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. So exciting. Yeah, absolutely. We are pumped to have you. And it's, it's been a lot of fun doing sort of these behind the scenes conversations with people that were involved in the movie and just kind of getting individual experiences um, of what happened with you in the late game. And, you know, with, with your character, Aaron, who uh, you're the scorekeeper, um, that's a role that, you know, we'd kind of had somebody in mind for, but we weren't really set on. And then Finn, who uh, also known as Jeff Van Gerwen, our director of photography and a producer, you know, suggested that that he could reach out to you and see if you could fly in. And this was like during the shoot. And so I just wanted to give sort of that pretext to the audience. But yeah, tell us about when the late game came into your life. Well, I had heard about it before I got pulled into it because I had done a film with Finn um, and we just like became very fast friends. I think we actually talked about hockey the first time I met him because he was wearing a Maple Leafs jersey or sweatshirt. Um, and we became really fast friends. And then he told me that he was doing this. And I was super excited for him because he was like, this is just such a like mesh of all the things that I love, you know, with directing. And then he loves hockey so much. He's from Canada. So it just, it, I was so excited for him. And then I... Um, he texted me and then I found out about it. I think it was maybe, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks beforehand. Before. I remember <laughs> the moment when the text went out is I was going through like anxiety attacks, trying to like yeah. plan all of this stuff. And I had a wall, like it looked like, I look like an insane conspiracy theorist. I had a wall <laughs> with like 600 note cards on it, trying mm -hmm. to like figure out how to plan each day and I was really counting on Finn, him being an experienced filmmaker to like help with this part. Cause we didn't have, I think this was technically fall under Rizzo's purview, but like none of us knew how to do this. And we had kind of pushed it off cause we were working on some other stuff. He flew in late. And then I just remember the look on his face when he saw this room and all these things, he's like, Oh, you're, you've got it figured out mostly. And then we had a local person sort of in line to play this Kristen role. And then or Kristen Roll, um, Aaron Roll. And uh, that's when Finn brought you up. And I think it was like, it all happened within 20 minutes of him bringing you up. We're in this room and I'm just like, yes, let's do it. Let's do it. And uh, that's when I think it's ha kind of fell together pretty quick from first text to locking up, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, from my memory, like we we had that local person. They were relatively expensive and not available a ton during our time frame, and so it sounded like Finn was confident that you could come sooner and stay longer, and so that was really important to us. And obviously, you came highly recommended by him. So yeah, I mean, I think it was like a quick like, yeah, let's do that. And we'll, we'll tell the other person it, we, we just had to do something else. Oh, I mean, I feel like I got, I got so lucky. It just was the way it all played out. It just was so nice. And there was other people that you guys had brought on that I had worked with in the last film. And that was Rachel and Jacob Fuller. And so I knew them and I knew Finn really well. And so it was just like so nice, but I didn't really know what to expect. And then got there and it was, it was so much fun. It was like such a blast. You said you didn't know what to expect. Did you have anything in mind or you were just going to see what it was like? I mean, so I knew hockey movie and I think that's about it. I think that's all I I really knew. And so I didn't, I knew, and then I knew I was the scorekeeper. And so I was thinking, okay, I'm going to be by the ice a ton. And I mean, I was, I was, my brother played travel hockey and you've met my brother. Um, yeah, Dan. Yeah. yeah. And so I, no, I don't think I've ever like been cooler to my brother either. Like once I told him about this um, and, oh, and then I was like texting him and I was like, do you know this guy named RA? <laughs> and he was like, what? He like freaked out. Cause he's listened to like uh, chiclets since like the very beginning. Oh, oh my gosh. And he, Ari was so nice. I was like, my brother, he's such a big fan. Like, do you, could you talk to him on FaceTime? And then like my brother talked to him and he was so nice. And like, my brother was just like beaming. He was like so happy. And um, yeah, but like I spent my childhood like next to my brother's like practices and everything. So it felt very much like home as soon as I got there and like just sitting next to the ice for hours and hours and hours. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I loved when I learned that nugget that like your brother had played and you had spent a lot of time at the rink. And so it just, we didn't realize it when we said yes, you know, to Finn reaching out. But like, that was such a cool highlight for me. Like in you playing this character, you actually know the world a little bit. Yeah, it was really, hockey has been a big part of my family. Like my mom, she grew up with uh, season tickets to Madison Square Garden and her and her dad, they would go see the Rangers play like all the time. And then I saw you guys were talking about in the first podcast, you were talking about, you know, hockey in the South and how that's such a weird, strange thing. And like, I grew up North of Atlanta. And so it was like the same kind of thing for my brother where people would be like, you play hockey, but you live in Georgia. Like, that's so weird. But my mom kind of imparted her love of hockey onto my brother. And so it, just became a, a big part of our family. But I, I didn't like my brother, he will like quiz me. He's like, who are my top 10 favorite players? And, or like, he'll try to get me to name all of the teams and stuff. And he like gets really happy if I know something. So like, I don't follow the sport like actively, like he's obsessive level, but I get really sucked in every single time I go to a game. Like I remember going when I was like nine years old and I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys would know better than me. It used to be more violent than it is now, the sport. Yeah, I would say so. That's I, like, I loved that, like, when they would fight, and I was, like, nine. Um, but, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but um, no, it's just, it's such a exciting sport to be around. I think whether you're, you know, you follow the sport or not, it's really easy to, like, get super hooked when you go to a game and so and just like going on the set it had that like energy that was like so fun and uh and I got to put skates on too and skate around because I I did like ice skating for a little bit I wanted to be a goalie for a period of time but then I thought about I said I knew like oh you lose teeth like, I, I just, like, knew, I was like, I'm going to be the one. Even, like, the goalies have the full face mask. Like, I was like, I'm going to be the one that loses all my teeth. So maybe not. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I, I, not to sidetrack, but, man, you really – I didn't know you grew up in Atlanta at any time. How old is your brother? 
Oh, uh, he is 30, 31. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> a little yeah we played say, this game he, a little bit. He's a little young for us to have say, played did he against. Play, like for the Atlanta Fire, like the Inferno or any of those yes. games, do you remember? Wow. Yeah. So they used to, every time we would play them when I was coming up, I'm, so I'm four years older than him. We would just get smoked by the Atlanta teams. Oh, it was never close. So that's, that's pretty have, wild to hear. You'll have to ask him though. I, Either he played for the Atlanta Inferno or he hated the guys on that team. I can't remember That's which okay. one it was. He was on like a bunch of different teams. He, you know, played for school and then he did travel hockey. So I don't know. I but yeah, he he loved it so much. He was very committed. He would like go to like the rink before school would start, like 6 a.m. to go like work on he he was like had a really great slap shot but he wasn't the fastest skater. And so he like would go and just practice and practice and practice. And so, um, yeah, it was like just a huge part of our family. And um, we had neighbors that were Canadian. So like they had like their little bond with hockey, but really not many people in the Atlanta area played at all as far as I know. Yeah. Yeah, we, we know, like you said, we know that space where like we were like, you know, some of the only hockey players where we grew up and, you know, there's there's almost a responsibility that comes with that because you're like representing the sport yeah. and standing up for it amongst people that don't like things that are different. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so you came to set. It was fun, which we appreciate, you know, that it was we agree it was fun and vibrant and warm set. Um any particular memories that stand out or, you know, anything, any specifics from the set? I was like amazed at how nice everybody was. And it's, you know, the whole cast is mainly all guys. And then me and the amount of heart to hearts that I had with like, like each individual person, like Tyler or Proton, like just everyone like, except Kevin's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I saw it. Okay. When we had the premiere, um, I walked in and I'm with my fiance and Kevin says to me, Hey, can I get your number? And I'm like, right. Next to him. And then I was like, wait, what? Cause I'm standing here right next to my fiance. And he's like, Oh no, did you know the thing in, in the movie? <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> but he, yeah. No, everyone was just so, so sweet. And, um, like your good friends, like that would, that were so nice to come on and, and drive us around like Mike and Joe and um, yeah, just the heart to hearts in the car and like, or going to Lodi to get coffee and just, and I shared a room with Rachel who I did the, the first film that I met Finn on um, and I met, met her then. And so there was one day where I don't think we needed to be at set or something for a bit. Um, and so we stayed in bed and watched Twilight because um, that's like her comfort movie. But no, there was just like little nice moments, like all throughout. Very like it felt like summer camp, basically. That's a fun, yeah. And, yeah, I, I yeah. agree. That's a fun way to put it. Yeah. And it had like a, I loved that, you know, everyone's commitment to, you know, changing things up or like, you know, you're discovering like little bits of these characters that are, since so many of the guys are, new to acting and like they're really coming into their own and like watching them like get really excited about oh let's add this line because like now this is my character is this kind of guy and that kind of thing it was just really really fun to watch it all evolve and like everybody's just like full commitment to it, it was just it was so much fun i want to do a second one. <laughs> um that was the really heartwarming part for me is kind of calling in these favors with my friends and they're everyone was so committed to it and you are basically the two of you are like two thirds of what I would call the real actors in the movie. Not not to undercut anyone else, just with y'all had the the experience going into this. You two and Alec. Um, so I really enjoyed um, doing scenes with you, especially when we were kind of really throwing things around and finding sort of Aaron's voice in the middle of a scene. And I just it was really really fun. Like, I really love how those scenes, because a couple of them were really on the spot and I just love how they came out. Um, especially it's Proton's first scene that we shot was with you that long, you have to walk across the ice and we have to, you know, we got to get that timing right plus deliver the lines. And it was just really well executed. Oh yeah. It was, 
it was so fun. It was so fun. Just like, I love, I love that part of it of just like the improv nature of the, like that comes into it, but just, yeah, it was just like very electric. It was so much fun. Specifically on that scene with Proton, when you're entering the ice, I just remember you had to walk really fast because if Finn went too slow on the ice dolly, like it would stop. So I just remember you were going a very abnormally fast speed. You can't necessarily tell unless you know when you're watching it. <laughs> but I always think about that. Like, like I'm watching that scene where I'm like shuffling. Like it, I look so ridiculous. I'm like <laughs> going like this, like across. And I mean, I, I fell many, many times, like not just during that part, but I think, I mean, tons of people just like, I mean, I was out there with just regular shoes. So yeah. And then I think the helmet rule became a thing where it's like, you can't cross the ice without having a helmet. Yeah, we got lucky on the whole with all of that. Uh, yeah, we really did. As many falls as we had, myself included. I picked the worst shoes to bring for the trip. Um, and I didn't I think ate, about it. I ate it a couple times too. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to have the helmet rule. I got, you know, very concerned about liability and, and everyone's safety. So, <laughs> Oh gosh, you know, that made me think of like, uh, I think actually this might be the reason why I decided not to play hockey. I remember have this mental image of seeing a a bunch of blood on the ice at my brother played at this rink called the Cooler. Yep, we've played um, there. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, I just remember walking into one of the rinks and like I think someone had backed into the net like really fast or something, and there was just blood all over the ice, and I'm like terrified of blood, so I was like. I gotta go. That's horrible. Shows up on the ice too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like you had a good reaction in the movie when Jordan gets hit in the face right in front of you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He pulled that moment. He really did. He like it. He, I was very impressed with him, and he, like you really, I genuinely was like felt he was in pain. The way he was, yeah. He committed to the bit, so. My favorite. Yeah, that's great that. feedback on his acting debut. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, he was a sweetheart too. Like the sweetest, was... right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just love that my inexperience. <clears throat> I didn't think about buying fake blood that could be orally ingested. So we all this fake blood I bought we couldn't use. I, all this fake blood. It looked like a big thing on Amazon, and it came. And it was like this big. But we had these. We used, a lot of what you see outside of the one VFX shot is ketchup. <laughs> so he was a trooper dealing with ketchup on his lip for a lot of those shots. <laughs> I oh I believe it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. I hate blood. How have you been feeling, you know, since the movie's been out there now that it's available uh to rent and purchase on Prime Video after we had the um premiere near your home? Oh, it's it's really cool. And oh my gosh, thank you for having the premiere like right by my house. <laughs> That's like, why we did it. Yeah. <laughs> It was right next to my Trader Joe's. Like, it was so convenient for me. Um, no, but it, it's been really cool. I wasn't, you know, when I walked in and I just saw, like, the amount of people that were there and the fact that all the spit and chiclets came and, like, um, and the empty netters, like, all of them just, like, coming. Like, it was so special. And um, I've had friends message me and they're like, oh, I saw you in this, like the trailer and I downloaded the movie and like, it just feels really good. And, um, you know, my friends who like know nothing about hockey, they're like, they're like, you did good. I didn't really know what was going on that much, but it was good. And my, my fiance, he, he doesn't really understand hockey and he does like, he didn't know what a hat trick was. So there was just, just like interesting, but like people are still able to enjoy the movie, even though they're not like super hockey people. So no, it's been really, really cool. And um, yeah, I think, I think the best part of it for me is just my brother is like feeling that connectivity with my brother, honestly. And um, now that you guys are friends too, it's just really special and like how it all just like brought everybody together and I, I think it's so cool how Finn just kind of fell into this project um, and he's like so passionate about it. Now you guys are all like buddies and it's like, this is really cool. I was going to say earlier, it's funny how you coming into the movie really kind of mirrors how Finn came into the picture too. We had someone else lined up for his role and just random Reddit message, a DM on Instagram and we're talking to him and 
we're just like, yeah, this this works. Let's just roll with it. Um, it's it was really cool to do this kind of stuff with some of my best friends, but also make new friends along the way. Like that was kind of the part that I couldn't imagine, you know, when I was be super stressed out planning these things and everybody on the crew was just so great. Cast and crew top to bottom. It was a blast. Yeah. And like Alec too, you guys didn't know him. That just kind of like worked out. Yeah. We, our last episode we recorded was with him and uh, we talk about how like, you know, we meant to get like videos of him playing hockey and stuff like that, but we just never did. And so we just kind of had to hope like he was all right. And he turned out to be pretty good. So I didn't, I didn't really know. Like I just thought that he had the background like everybody else did in terms of hockey. I mean, he did, but like all we went on was like him saying he could play and like Tyler and I have, have a friend that once lied to get a uh, role where he, you have to skate and he couldn't skate and immediately got fired. So we were just like, let's just hope it's not that situation. But like he says he's played, he sounds like he knows what hockey is. <laughs> yeah. It all worked out. It was, yeah, it just kind of all fell into place and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what comes next with this. Cause I do really feel like it has this whole, it's, oh, one thing in particular that really sticks out to me. When we were at the premiere, there was a guy that came and he like was someone that plays in a beer league and he traveled f from maybe DC. From he Virginia, was, yeah, I remember him, yeah. yeah. I met him too, yeah. And he was just like, and I was like, that's so special. Like this person like saw this thing and was like, wow, that's, a movie for me and like came all that way just to come to the premiere and like had the poster and was getting everyone to sign it and just like it was so sweet and it just like it was just like a really great community feeling I, I left that premiere feeling like just so like warm and fuzzy it was pretty surreal yeah and I hope we continue to cultivate that community. I mean, from the set being this beautiful community to now bring it into the hockey community and beer league, which generally is a good and warm community. Um, and certainly there's some shitheads here and there, but for the most part, um, it's good people. And yeah, so I hope that we're going to continue to cultivate a good community of people in hockey that can rally around this brand and get enjoyment out of it and, you know, feel enjoyment hanging out with the characters, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, so good. So tell us about your career before the late game. Like, what were you up to? I know you, you have a singing background as well. would love to hear about that. Yeah. Um, so I grew up north of Atlanta and I started singing when I was five, six, really, just really young. And then I started with this group when I was seven years old that performed with the Atlanta Symphony. And so I studied like classical music and opera for 10 years. And then, um, yeah, and then that was just like a huge part of my life and part of my identity. And I, I think above everything, I would say that like, I am a singer. Um, but then I started theater in high school and I fell in love with that. And so then I was like, you know what? I've done all of this training and singing. I wanna continue the training with theater. So I went to college for theater. And so most, most of my background was plays and like live theater. So I hadn't done a ton of film. And then I had a friend that I went to um, college with who knew Finn and they went and got their masters in film together. And that's how I got roped into Finn's first project. And that was my first movie that I'd ever done was that one, which will come out this year. Um, and then, yeah, but I, I moved up to New York and I was singing with this group that sings at Carnegie Hall and kind of continued that classical stuff um, for like five years. And yeah, now I just want to keep going after different projects, whether it's singing, acting, live theater again, um, or film, you know, uh, so yeah, I just kind of love it all and just want to keep, keep pursuing all of the different things that feel, feel good or feel like summer camp. Like, just like, I love that community aspect of singing with a lot of people, acting with a lot of people. It just, the friends that you make is just a huge part of it for me. Um, so yeah, just excited. Yeah, I mean, I just 
pursuing creative arts that you truly love are def definitely a great way to do work. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, Finn had mentioned that uh, you won a Grammy when you were singing at Carnegie Hall. I, yeah, I, well, I was nominated for a Grammy with the Carnegie Hall. And then I have a nomination and then an award from Atlanta Symphony. So they're not like on the mantle or anything, but I was a part of these sessions. Um, no, it, it, was, it was pretty, yeah, surreal. And the, the first two nominations happened when I was in high school. And then the third was, you know, as an adult living in New York. So it just felt really cool to like have that again in my life. Cause who would have expected like, that to happen at all let alone like three times of yeah so it, it um i'm glad that i continued that career of doing the classical stuff because it it also it just is that feels like home to me a lot so yeah no it's it's kind of weird are you still singing much these days yeah so i am also my fiance is a producer and he um we kind of met that way of he was living in Richmond, Virginia. I was living in New York already and I saw he was doing music production. So I messaged him and I was like, Hey, I'm a singer. Like, like let's work together. And he was like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, let me know if you're ever in Richmond, Virginia. And then he's like, you're a singer. I'm like, yeah, I like sing with Carnegie Hall stuff. And he's like, oh, okay. Like, well, let's do something together. So I went down there to visit him and we started um, working on music together. So that's, the goal there is to put out our own music. Um, he's got his like own project that he's been working on. I have mine and yeah. So I definitely, I think I'm, I'm moving away from the classical and doing more of like a, my own thing, whatever that ends up looking like. But yeah, that's the goal. That's awesome. I had no awesome. Idea. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Excited to listen and to make sure we share it with late game fans when it's available. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'll let you know. It's a process though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we know, right? I mean, it seems like all, all art, you know, takes a lot of time and effort to, especially to get out there. Um, and I know, I think a lot of consumers that don't necessarily engage in the creation of entertainment don't always realize how much goes into everything. Yeah. I, I think I, I come from such a background of like, I sing and that's what I do. And now diving into more of like the driver's seat of it and like having to learn production and, and songwriting, it's just a totally different beast. And there's just, you know, to make something yourself, like you guys know, there's just so many parts of it that you didn't really think of it beforehand when you had just like the passion of it and then you see just like everything it takes, but it's cool to grow in, in the process. And I think, I mean, I always wanted to do it just because I wanted that sense of accomplishment of doing it myself. And I, you know, it was really important to John, my fiance, that, you know, when we started working together, he was moving so quickly, like producing stuff that I didn't really understand what he was doing. So I was like, I need to get my skills up to the, to the place where I like can work together with him. So that's been what I've been working on for a while now, but. That's cool. We got a taste of that doing some of the original music for the movie um, with Russell Hedman out here in Denver. And you know, he's got the whole, he's a lawyer by trade, but has a whole studio into his house. And the uh, John Calamino song in the movie, like we, Zucker and I did that together with them. I say, yeah, I sat in a room, you know, it's not like I did anything, but to watch everything that goes into it. And like, I was, you know, present for our final sound mix too. And like, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that just to get it to sound the right way. Yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, I, you know it, but then when you see it, it's like even more overwhelming than you'd think. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love the John Calamino song. I love what you ended up doing with it. It, yeah, it totally like had it became a whole new thing from when we originally filmed. So it's just cool to see. Yeah, Russell, that was Russell's idea. We showed Russell and my buddy, Mike Riley, the movie. They were like the first kind of outsiders to see it to get an idea of how to help music wise. And that was his first suggestion was that and we're like, that wasn't even on our radar as being a possibility. Like we had, we had the stuff that we shot and I was like, that's funny. And I was like, Oh man, he gives us like kind of like a first draft of it. And we're like, Whoa, this is so much better than anything we could conceive. 
Yeah, first the the idea of trying to morph into the song was like, oh, I don't know. Like we just have had it my way this way in my head the whole time. And then yeah, he like gave us some kind of concept of what it could be. And we were like, oh yeah, this could really bring things up a level. Yeah. Oh, I love that bit though, the you like slamming your face into the into the glass and trying to stop me from like playing what was like after that. Oh, that was so fun. That was a really fun scene to shoot with me, you and Proton. Oh my gosh, yeah. No. Yeah, so many little things like that that just kind of like, oh, and like the Noel, we didn't know I was going to end up having like a little flirty thing with him. And that just was one of those things that just on the day you're like, oh, what if when he scores his goal, you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like so That shot of you gets a laugh every time. Every, every screen <laughs> we've had, it gets such a good laugh. It's so oh, perfect. No. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no, it's so funny. He's he's so nice. I could just like I think I've said that about everybody, but literally everyone that was there was so so nice. And yeah, I hope we get to do it again. I really do. Yeah, uh, us too for sure. You know, we would love to make more movies with these people. Certainly one day hope to do a late game sequel. Um and yeah, I mean any any other thoughts on the late game or what you hope for its future or anything like that? I, I really hope it just continues to find its people and then also introduce, you know, other people that don't really know much about hockey, like introduce them to it. And yeah, I think it, you know, you can see it. I mean, I've seen things online of people that they get so excited about it because it is this like, very special thing that feels very personal for a lot of people. So I just think that it's really cool that, especially with your two, like your backstory of how you wanted to create this because of your experiences playing hockey together. I think people just feel that. So I just hope, yeah, it continues to find its its home in like the, you know, beer league community, the hockey community, and, or just people that like funny movies. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, we really, really appreciate that. And um, it was such a pleasure to work with you and to have you on set. And one thing we didn't bring up yet is, you know, you you are the only female character in the movie. Um, and, you know, and from our perspective, like, Tyler and I are all about equal rights and representation, but it was a combination of could only get so many people to dedicate the time and effort and energy to this. Uh, and two, the reality of beer league hockey is you may not see any any women there like myself you know i've played with a few women in my adult leagues um but it's not a rare night to have zero females at the arena so we were we were glad to to get you in there yeah no i was happy to be a part of it and it made me feel feel special and um no it, it was just so nice and like i didn't feel like here are the guys and here's that girl like everyone was just like totally like i just felt part of the team just like everybody else yeah you you play it so well of you really feel like you're just part of this environment like you've seen it all before and you're just like one of my favorite one of my many favorites of you is when chet gives you like little, what's up cutie and like it, you don't you don't give this like disgusted face or anything like that i think that could have been easy to do you just like no reaction like you just <laughs> it's completely tuned out and it get, it cracks me up every time i watch it yeah no i that I was thinking, like, how would I feel? And I'm just like, just pretend it didn't even happen. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it just dead eyes straight ahead made me so happy. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously we had some great women on our crew as well. So it wasn't completely devoid of other women. But, um, yeah, I mean, you just you really crushed that element. And like Tyner said, you know, it felt like you lived in that world perfectly with them. So, you know, we're just so glad that all these pieces fell into place to, to be able to have you play Aaron. Oh it, oh, it was so the best time. And I just can't thank you enough for having me. It was just, it was so just kismet and just like, yeah, I, I, I feel really lucky. And, and I also, you know, had people there that I knew and that felt really nice and comfortable, but meeting everybody and making all these new friends was just really, really special. And yeah, no, it was a good time. <laughs> A good time but yeah no thank you so much for having me in the movie it was so, so cool thank you so much for being part of it you definitely elevated it we'll get you singing in the yeah. sequel I didn't, know, <laughs> I, I didn't know that was in your toolbox so we'll, we'll get it we'll get it in there yeah the john calamino rap part two 
There we go. Yeah, featuring uh, Aaron. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Uh, all right. I love that. Yeah. Thanks so much for, for joining us on the podcast. We're excited to continue to grow the late game community with you and, uh, excited to see what else you do. Thanks. Oh, likewise. Thank you guys so much.